Sun Tzu's The Art of War is a classic ancient Chinese text that has transcended its original military context to become a timeless guide for strategy, leadership and decision making. Written over two millennia ago, this book's enduring relevance lies in its profound insights into human nature, conflict resolution and the art of achieving victory without unnecessary conflict. Sun Tzu was a Chinese military strategist and philosopher who wrote The Art of War during the Warring States period in ancient China, around 5th century BCE. This tumultuous era was marked by frequent warfare and political instability among the competing states. Sun Tzu's work aimed to provide guidance for winning battles, but it also offered wisdom on avoiding conflict whenever possible. In this video, we will explore the teachings of this historical text. Let's geek! The opening chapter is about laying plans. It sets the foundation for the entire book. Sun Tzu highlights the importance of careful planning before engaging in any endeavour. It emphasises understanding the environment, the stakes involved and the dynamics at play, essential for effective strategizing in any domain. Sun Tzu argued that victorious battles are won before they are fought. Careful planning and strategic thinking are crucial for achieving your objectives. This principle is applicable not only in military campaigns, but also in business, sports and personal life. One notable success that you can extrapolate from this understanding was the targeted killing of Al-Qaeda's leader Osama bin Laden in May 2011. Intelligence agencies used a combination of human intelligence sources, signals, intelligence and open source information to locate his hideout in Pakistan. This information allowed US Navy SEALs to launch Operation Neptune Spear, a surgical strike that resulted in Bin Laden's death, ultimately eliminating a significant threat to global security. The second chapter is titled Waging War. In this chapter, Sun Tzu emphasised the importance of self-awareness and a deep understanding of one's adversaries. By comprehending your strengths, weaknesses and goals, as well as those of your opponents, you can make informed decisions that maximise your chances of success. He delves into the key components of warfare, emphasising the need for clear objective, the alignment of efforts to achieve that objective and the wise allocation of resources to ensure success. It underlines the vital importance of strategic focus and unity in purpose. Sun Tzu stresses the significance of considering various factors before engaging in battle. For example, the Battle of Midway in World War II was a pivotal naval battle between the United States and the Empire of Japan, fought near the Midway Atoll in the Pacific. The US forces led by Admiral Chester Nimitz had a thorough understanding of their own capabilities and the capabilities of the Japanese. The US had broken key Japanese naval codes, providing crucial intelligence about the Japanese plan of attack. Understanding their own strengths and weaknesses, especially in terms of naval air power and aircraft's carriers, allowed the US to formulate a strategic plan. Additionally, the US correctly predicted the Japanese targets, Midway Atoll, and the timing of the attack. The US positioned its carriers strategically and prepared a strong defence. This knowledge and preparation enabled the US forces to surprise the Japanese fleet, sinking four Japanese carriers while only losing one of their own. The Battle of Midway shifted the balance of power in the Pacific in favour of the Allies and marked a turning point in World War II. In the most famous principles from the art of war is the idea of winning without an actual combat. Sun Tzu advocated for diplomatic solutions, alliances and the use of strategy to achieve victory without resorting to violence. In modern times, this principle can be seen in negotiations and conflict resolution. The third chapter is called Attack by Stratagem, where Sun Tzu delves into the art of deception and intelligence. He advocates for cunning strategies, understanding the enemy's vulnerabilities and utilising surprise to gain a strategic advantage. It highlights the psychological aspect of warfare and the value of well-timed surprises. Sun Tzu was a master of psychological warfare. He believed that creating uncertainty in the minds of your enemies could be as effective as physical force. In contemporary contexts, understanding the psychology of your competitors or opponents can provide a strategic advantage. For example, during World War II, the Allies employed Operation Fortitude, a massive deception campaign designed to mislead Nazi Germany about the location of the D-Day landings. By creating a fictitious army group and using false radio traffic, they deceived the Germans into positioning their forces away from the actual landing sites in Normandy, thereby exploiting this weakness. It played a crucial role in the success of the Normandy invasion. The fourth chapter talks about tactical dispositions. Sun Tzu emphasises the significance of adaptability and flexibility in the face of changing circumstances. Effective strategies must be fluid and adaptable, enabling quick adjustments to gain the upper hand and respond to the opponent's moves. Rigidity leads to failure. 
This concept is vital in today's rapidly changing world, where the ability to pivot and adjust is often the key to success. One remarkable example of this principle can be found in the Battle of Khe Sanh during the Vietnam War. In 1968, the US Marine Corps faced intense combat. They defended the Khe Sanh combat base in northwest and south of Vietnam. The North Vietnamese Army besieged the base. Adaptability and flexibility were essential in the situation. The US Marines had to constantly adjust the tactics to counter the NVA's evolving strategies. They fortified their positions, created intricate defensive networks, and employed innovative tactics to withstand the siege. One notable adaptation was the use of airdrops to resupply the base, known as Operation Niagara. Despite intense enemy fire and difficult weather conditions, the Marines successfully dropped crucial supplies, including ammunition and food, to sustain the defences. The Marines' adaptability and resilience were evident throughout the battle. They repelled multiple NVA assaults and inflicted heavy casualties on the besieging forces. Ultimately, the NVA withdrew from Khe Sanh, marking a significant victory for the US Marines. Chapter 5 of Sun Tzu's The Art of War is titled Energy. In this chapter, Sun Tzu delves into the importance of conserving and harnessing energy in warfare. While the term energy in Sun Tzu's context may not refer to the same concept as we understand it in modern physics, it can be translated as the resources, strength and momentum that a military force possesses. Sun Tzu emphasizes the need to be mindful of one's resources and not to waste them needlessly. This includes the physical resources like troops, equipments and supplies, as well as the intangible resources like morale and public support. Wasting these resources can weaken a military force and hinder its ability to achieve its objectives. Sun Tzu encourages military leaders to operate efficiently and take actions that provide the greatest benefit while expending the least amount of resources. This involves making strategic choices that maximize the impact of one's forces while minimizing their wear and tear. Sun Tzu advises against overextending one's forces, instead he recommends maintaining a strong strategic position where the army has access to resources, supply lines are secure and the troops are well rested and motivated. This allows for sustained and effective military campaigns. Sun Tzu recognizes the role of morale and motivation as a form of energy. A motivated and disciplined army will expend less energy in battle because the soldiers are more focused and determined. Conversely, a demoralized force will quickly exhaust its energy and lose the will to fight. This can be demonstrated during the Battle of Saratoga in 1777, at the time of the American Revolutionary War, where American General Benedict Arnold recognized the importance of conserving his force's energy. He ordered his troops to engage in guerrilla tactics and sniping rather than full-scale frontal assaults, conserving their strength for the crucial moments where they could engage the British, leading to a decisive American victory. Chapter 6 is entitled Weak Points and Strong. Sun Tzu emphasizes the importance of thoroughly understanding the weaknesses and vulnerabilities of both your own forces and your adversary. This knowledge is essential for crafting effective strategies. In the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC, during the Second Punic War, Hannibal, the Carthaginian general, used a brilliant tactical maneuver to encircle and defeat a much larger Roman army. By attacking the Romans at their weakest point, where there was a lack of coordination in their lines, Hannibal achieved a devastating victory. Surprise attacks are often highly effective because they catch the enemy off guard and exploit their own preparedness. By attacking where the enemy expects the least, you can maximize the impact of your efforts. The surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941 is a historic example. The element of surprise allowed the Japanese to inflict significant damage on the US Pacific Fleet temporarily crippling its capabilities. This takes us to chapter 7, called Maneuvering. Sun Tzu explores the concept of strategic maneuvering in warfare, emphasizing the importance of flexibility, adaptability, and the ability to outmaneuver the enemy. He advises that an army should be like water, capable of adapting its form to the terrain and circumstances. The German Blitzkrieg tactics, otherwise called lightning warfare tactics, during World War II exemplified this principle. German forces utilized fast-moving infantry, tanks and air support to outmaneuver their opponents. This flexibility and rapid maneuvering allowed them to achieve early victories, such as the Battle of France in 1940. Chapter 8 of Sun Tzu's The Art of War is titled Variation in Tactics. Sun Tzu discusses the importance of employing a variety of tactics to keep the enemy off balance and adapt to changing circumstances on the battlefield. He emphasizes that a successful commander should be versatile and capable of switching tactics as needed. 
as relying on a single approach can make their strategies predictable. By employing different tactics, a commander can keep the enemy guessing and unable to formulate an effective response. The British Royal Navy's use of the Nelson touch during the Napoleonic Wars is a notable example. Admiral Lord Nelson employed various tactics such as crossing the T and the use of smaller ships for close-range engagements to defeat the French and Spanish fleets. This adaptability in tactics contributed to British naval supremacy. Sun Tzu emphasizes the need to change our strategies if they prove ineffective. It is essential to recognize when a strategy is failing and be willing to pivot to a different approach to achieve success. For example, during the early stages of World War I, trench warfare became the dominant strategy on the Western Front. However, after years of stalemate, the German Spring Offensive of 1918 introduced new tactics, including stormtrooper assaults and combined arms operations. These changes in strategy briefly shifted the balance of power on the Western Front. Chapter 9 is titled The Army on the March. Sun Tzu discusses the importance of efficient logistics, supply lines and strategic mobility when an army is on the move. He highlights that a well-supplied army is essential for sustained operations and commanders must plan and manage their logistics meticulously. The Battle of Bulge in 1944 was an example where supply lines played a crucial role. The battle took place through the harsh winter of 1944-1945 in the Ardennes Forest, where the weather severely affected military operations. The adverse weather conditions made it difficult for both sides to maintain the supply lines. Roads were icy and often impassable, and the low temperatures posed a significant challenge to the transportation and delivery of essential supplies, such as food, ammunition, fuel and medical provisions. The German attack during the Battle of the Bulge was designed to catch the Allies off guard and disrupt their supply lines. The Germans aimed to split the Allied front, capture key supply depots and cut off the vital port of Antwerp, which was the critical port for supplying the Allied forces. The Allies quickly recognised the threat posed by the German offensive and scrambled to respond. Their ability to withstand the initial onslaught and mount a successful defence hinged on the supply lines. Reinforcements, ammunition and other essential resources had to be transported to the front line rapidly. The successful defence ultimately depended on maintaining and protecting the supply lines. As the battle progressed, some American units found themselves encircled by German forces. The ability to resupply these trapped units became a top priority. The Allies eventually repelled the German offensive, but the battle demonstrated that even well-prepared armies could be severely hampered when the supply lines were disrupted. Chapter 10 is titled Terrain. Sun Tzu explores the significance of understanding and utilizing terrain to one's advantage in warfare. He emphasizes that terrain can be a force multiplier and that commanders should adapt their strategies accordingly. Sun Tzu advises commanders to select battlegrounds that favor their own forces and if possible, disadvantage the enemy. This involves carefully evaluating the terrain and its sustainability for the planned tactics. This can be seen during the Battle of Austerlitz in 1805, when Napoleon Bonaparte chose the battlefield to his advantage. He lured the Austro-Russian forces into a position where their flanks were vulnerable due to unfavourable terrain. This led to a decisive French victory. Chapter 11 is titled The Nine Situations. Sun Tzu discusses different battlefield scenarios or situations that military commanders may encounter. He outlines principles and strategies for handling each situation effectively. The situations are as follows. Dispersion when your forces are scattered or divided. Concentration, when your forces are concentrated in one location. Outward advancement, when you are advancing into enemy territory. Inward retraction, when you are retreating or withdrawing to your own territory. Encirclement, when you are surrounded by the enemy. Empty space, when the enemy is vulnerable due to gaps in their formation. Solid formation, when the enemy is well fortified and difficult to penetrate. Avoidance of battle, when avoiding direct conflict is the best strategy. Desperation and death, when faced with a life or death situation with no other option. Sun Tzu advises commanders to adapt their strategies based on the specific situation they are facing. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to warfare and the strategy should match the circumstances. For example, during the early stages of the American Revolutionary War, the Continental Army often employed guerrilla tactics and avoided direct confrontations with the more powerful British forces. This strategy allowed them to conserve their forces and gradually wear down the enemy's resolve. Chapter 12 is titled The Attack by Fire. Sun Tzu discusses the use of fire as a strategic tool in warfare. He emphasizes that fire can be a potent weapon when used strategically and offers insights into how it can be employed to gain advantages on the battlefield. Fire is a powerful and uncontrollable force that can be harnessed for destructive purposes when applied strategically. 
the use of Greek fire by the Byzantine Empire during the Byzantine Arab Wars in the 7th century is a historical example. Greek fire was a highly flammable incendiary weapon that was projected onto enemy ships. Its devastating effects, along with its ability to burn on water, made it a formidable naval weapon. Chapter 13 is titled The Use of Spies. Sun Tzu explores the role of intelligence and espionage in warfare. He discusses the importance of gathering information, understanding the enemy's intentions and capabilities, and using spies effectively. He states that knowing the enemy and understanding the battlefield are essential for making informed decisions. For example, during World War II, the success of the British codebreakers at Bletchley Park in deciphering the German Enigma code provided invaluable intelligence to the Allied forces. This intelligence allowed them to anticipate German moves, including U-boat deployments, and gain a significant advantage in the Battle of the Atlantic. Sun Tzu's The Art of War stands as a testament to the enduring nature of strategic thinking. Its principles have transcended their military origins to become a source of guidance and inspiration in various aspects of modern life. By understanding the timeless wisdom contained within this ancient text, individuals and organizations can equip themselves with the tools to navigate the complexities of today's world with greater confidence and success.